Hey everybody, and welcome to the Dosiri example for drawing shear and moment diagrams with point loads. And this is our skateboard example from lesson 10, where we had the 170 pound guy riding the board with 100 pounds on his rear foot. We chose in class not to draw the shear and moment diagram of this problem using the method of cuts and writing equations simply because it would have been five cuts and well, that's a lot of work. So we saved this one for the graphical method and it's a really easy uh, shear and moment diagram with the graphical method. So we're just gonna show how it works with point loads. So we already have the free body diagram with the support reactions calculated. And so we can jump right into drawing our shear diagram. And if we look over to the right, on the sheet, we can see the relationships that we talked about in lesson 10, and we know that the shear diagram is nothing more than the area under the negative of the load diagram. And we also established that, well, point loads don't have areas, but uh, that just means they're a jump, and we jump in the direction of the load when we're drawing the shear diagram. So what we can do is let's go ahead and we'll just draw our shear diagram directly underneath our loading um, and that just makes things a little bit cleaner we always want to label what our diagram is going to be and give it units so we'll go ahead and, and mark that and then it can also help you out when you're drawing your shear and moment diagrams just to keep things clean to go ahead and trace down where you're going to have changes on your shear diagram due to changes in the load because we will always whenever there's a change in the load see a change on our shear diagram um, unless it's a applied moment uh, those do not cause jumps or anything in our shear diagram so let's go ahead and start drawing the area under the load diagram is zero for the first five and a half inches so because we have zero load so we're going to have zero shear and then we said we have a point load and we're going to jump in the direction of the load. So we're just going to jump right up our 100.7 pounds. And then we have no change in the loading for the next six inches. So we can just go straight across, but then we hit our 100 pounds going down and that's going to drop us straight down to about 0.7. And then we have constant load, so we can stay constant, our constant load of zero. So we'll have a constant shear until we hit the negative 70 pounds down. And so we'll drop down by negative 70, which gets us to negative 69. Oops, that didn't draw very well. 69.7. We have no then change in the load until we get to the wheel which then jumps us back up to zero because we jump up by our 69.7 pounds. And we end up with three areas of shear, which we can mark, and I could call this area one, area two, and our negative area three. There it is. So we have our shear diagram and we can actually look at this and we can discover that V max is going to be equal to our 100.7 pounds and that's a lot larger than the 0 0.7 pounds that we found in class in lesson 10 when we cut a section at 20 inches, when we cut a section right in the middle of the board. So we now want to see how that compares for our moment diagram. So we know that the moment is the area under the shear diagram. So we can go ahead and start our moment diagram. Same thing, you want to make sure that you give sign convention and give your units. You can either label each number individually or just put units on the side of the plot. And to help us out, just keeping things aligned, we can mark where there are changes in the shear diagram because those will cause changes in our moment diagram. And so the area under the shear diagram from zero to five and a half inches is zero, so we're gonna have zero moment. And then we hit A1, and area one 
we can calculate that area because our moment is equal to the area under the shear diagram. We can calculate that moment just using the 100.7 times the 4 inches and we find that that's going to give us 402.8. So that means that as we travel across the 4 inches we are going to jump up to a point at 402.8 and the question is how do we get there? Do we get there with a curve? Uh, is it a straight jump up? And we are going to get there through a line that connects our 0 to the 402.8. Because our shear is constant, then our slope must be constant because we know that the shear, the slope of the shear equals the load. So we're going to have a constant slope that takes us up. And now we're going to add area 2. So area 2 we can find by taking our 0 0.7 which is the height of the area multiplied by the length which would be 19 inches. That's the space between the feet and that turns out to be 13.3. So we're now going to add 13.3 pounds which will take us up to 416.1 and again we have constant load so we're going to have a constant change in our shear diagram. We'll end up somewhere up here around like I said 416.1 and it will be a straight linear line which I didn't draw very well. Let's try that again. Still missed. There it is. Okay. So we have our straight linear increase, and then finally we will decrease by area 3, and so we can look at our area 3, and that's going to be our 69.7 times our 6 inches, and that actually works out to be 415.8, not quite the 416.1, so when we drop down we actually will end up at 0 0.3. We do drop down again linearly because we have a constant load. And we're basically down here at 0 and then we'd be across with 0 shear. Now that 0 0.3 is nothing more than round off error and it's completely acceptable round off error. The, the 69.3, perhaps that should have been 69.32, uh, or the 100.7 was a little smaller than that. So you don't worry about the round off error. That is approximately zero, which is what we want our moment diagram to close at. So we have our moment diagram, fill in that area, and we can see that our M max is slightly larger than what we found in class at 410. Here we see that it's actually 416.1 inch pounds or pounds inches. And so we've been able to find the max shear and the max moment, but also see how the shear and the moment vary through the uh, length of the skateboard. And Next, we're going to have an example for the person sitting on the board, and then there's a third example posted out on the modules of a board, or of actually a cantilevered beam that has applied load as a uniform load, a point load, and an applied moment.